all the secrets. So in a very short time, this is the secret of life. First of all, why did God create the world? It's a big question, but we need to know the answer. But before we get to the answer, how did the Jewish people survive? We need to understand this also. Everybody is impressed. Everybody marvels. How come Jews are still here? Other nations are gone. A few years ago, I was in Italy, in Rome, and we had to get back to the airport. So I'm sitting in the taxi, and the taxi can't move because the pedestrians, the people on the street, it just doesn't stop. So I said as a joke to the driver, I said, these Romans are going to make me miss my flight. And he said, these are not Romans. There are no Romans. The only people left from those times are the Jews. What is the miracle? We know it's a miracle. We can't understand how it is that we're still here. What is the secret? But before we get to that, why, for 5,000 years, have people been asking the same question? Why are we here? What is the purpose of life? For 5,000 years, the same question. First of all, if you can't find an answer in 5,000 years, change the subject. Enough already. And also, you've been here for 5,000 years, what is the question? Why are we here? Where do you want to go? Do we know of any other place? And people ask the question so seriously that if they don't get an answer, they're very upset. Why are we here? What is the purpose of life? Before we get to that, I have another question. How come when, when a person falls down the stairs, he ends up in the hospital with serious injuries. But that's only if he falls down the stairs when he's sober. But if he falls down those same stairs when he's drunk, he just gets up and he keeps walking. <clears throat> Why is that? These are deep questions. Serious question. What is depression? What does it mean when you go to a doctor because you can't, you can't do anything. You can't wake up. You can't make a phone call. You can't... You go to the doctor. He does all the tests and he tells you you're, you're fine. You're healthy. You say, but, but I'm not. I can't... He says, you're fine. All the tests are good. See, so, so what's wrong with me? He says, it's just in your head. Just in the head. The worst place to have a depression is in your head. In the foot, it wouldn't be so bad. So what do you mean, just in the head? That's where I don't want it. So what is it? I'm not talking about a chemical depression, but an emotional depression. What is that? These are all very important questions, and we will have an answer, one answer to all of them. But one more question. What is death? What does it mean that someone dies? I don't understand. A dead thing can't live. A living thing can't die. Life is life. Death is death. What does it mean somebody dies? You're alive and then you're not? How can that be? So we're used to it, but it doesn't make sense. Another question. What is wrong with teenagers? You have a teenager? What are they so angry about? They're all angry. They live in your house for free. You give them everything they want if they bother you long enough. And they're angry at the world. What is that? Let me ask you a religious question. What are you not allowed to do on Shabbat? 
What is forbidden on Shabbat? Any activity that is productive, creative, useful, is not allowed. Useless, you can do all day long. So if you want to carry a giant mattress up and down the stairs in your house all day until you collapse, that's not called work. <laughs> because it doesn't accomplish anything. But if you turn on a machine, oh, that's labor. Why? Because it's productive. So what does this mean that God tells us that for 24 hours every week, you shouldn't do anything productive? What kind of plan is that? What's a midlife crisis? You're doing fine, you're halfway through your life, all of a sudden, crisis. What is that? What's a midlife crisis? In your relationships, what does it mean I love you very much, but I don't like you. How does that happen? How can you love someone and not even like them? If you don't even like them, how, do you, how did you end up loving them? And if you love them, what don't you like? One final question. When we take a drink, we say l'chaim, to life. We don't want to die. <laughs> it's a little prayer. I want to live. Why? Is taking a drink so dangerous? There are much more dangerous things that we do. And we don't say L'chaim. I flew here from Atlanta. We came to a half hour before Buenos Aires. But there was a problem in the airport. So we were told to land in Santiago. So we turned around and went to Santiago. We landed in Santiago. We, we st stood on the, in the airport for a half hour. And we were told it's OK to go to Buenos Aires. So the plane turned around and we flew to Buenos Aires. We came to a half hour before Buenos Aires. And we were told that we have to circle. But they didn't have enough fuel for circling. So we went back to Buenos Aires. <laughs> I finally had to take a different airline in the, in the Lan Air to come here. So when you get on an, on an airplane, shouldn't you say L'chaim? <laughs> and we don't say L'chaim when we get on an airplane. But when we take a drink, I don't want to die, L'chaim, I want to live. Why? To make the question even more interesting, there's a non-Jewish custom that when you make a toast with, uh, with, with a drink, you touch the glass, your glass, to the other person's glass. It's not a Jewish custom. Where does it come from? In the olden days, if you were eat eating or drinking in somebody's house and they gave you a drink, it was probably poison. So to make sure that you don't die from this drink, you exchange drinks. You say, no, no, you drink this, give me your drink. So they would exchange drinks to prove that it's safe. But that's a non-Jewish custom. Jews never had a problem. Because when a Jew needs to kill another Jew, he'll find some other way to do it. No Jew will ruin a good schnapps. It's not a Jewish thing. So our drinks were always safe. And yet we say L'chaim. How come? OK, there are more questions. In fact, almost every question will be explained and answered with this little secret. God created the world out of nothing. Which means he had to invent existence because it didn't exist. He gave all the things that are here, he gave existence. 
what is the scientific definition? What does it mean that this is? It takes up space. That's what it means. A physical existence means taking up space. A book exists because you can't put another book in the same place. Even a thought in your mind exists because it takes up the space. You can't have another thought in the same space in the same time. A feeling in the heart takes up space. Your heart is full. So everything that exists, exists by taking up space. A stone, fire, water, a tree, everything takes up space. If you can put a book in the same place as another book, they don't exist. Then God gave every existing being a life. The life of fire is the effect that it has on its surroundings. It makes heat, it makes light, it, dis it consumes. The life of water keeps things cold, makes things grow, keeps things stuck together. So they exist the same way, taking up space, but they have different lives. So life means the function, the effect, the contribution that the existence makes. A human being exists and lives. I have an existence and I have a life. My existence is that I take up space. But in order to exist and to continue taking up space, I need to eat. I need to drink. I need to sleep. I need security. I need a house. I'm sorry that I don't speak Spanish. <coughs> it would be much easier, no? So from all the times that I come to, to Argentina and to other Spanish countries, I don't, I don't remember. I go home and I forget. The only words I remember in Spanish is Papa Noel. Because <laughs> I hear it so much. Every kid in the airport tells me Papa Noel. <laughs> I thought it meant, look, the rabbi. <laughs> it doesn't mean that. <laughs> so a human being has an existence and a life. To exist has many conditions. If I don't eat, can't exist. If I don't drink, I can't exist. If I don't have a house, I can't exist. And when I have a house and I have food and I have drink, then I exist. But then I also have a life. And sometimes the two are not compatible. For example, if I was in this room alone, my existence would be very good. I would have the whole space to myself. Existence means taking up space. So if I was here alone, my existence would be much better. But you come and you ruin my existence. You take away my space. So I hate you. 
I'm just being honest. On the other hand, for my life, it's much better that you're here. Because talking to an empty room is not so, it's not a life. So I don't know if I should hate you or love you. Because for my life, you're very good. For my existence, you're very bad. So what do I do? And we're not even married. <laughs> Imagine a married couple. Marriage means you find one person who appeals to you so much that you let her ruin your existence. That's what marriage means. Will you please marry me and ruin my existence? Because that way we'll have a life. So this is how it happens that I love you, but I don't like you. Or I like you, but I don't love you. Because for one thing, you're good. For the other thing, you're bad. So what should I do? The answer is, wherever there's a problem between existing and living, give up the existence. Give away the space. Because existence is a burden. Life carries you. Life means you can make a contribution, no matter what your existence is. A chassid who was in the North Pole, where they send the worst criminals, and they never come back sane. They crack up over there. He came back sane after 18 years. They said, how could you still be normal? He said, you're comparing me to the Cossacks. When they arrest the Cossack, the criminal, they take away his existence. He had a house, he had a horse. <laughs> he had women, wine. What did I have before they arrested me? Nothing. So I davened in the morning and I davened at night. What do you think I did in the North Pole? I davened in the morning, I davened at night. Why should I crack up? All depression comes from our existence. Because to exist is a little depressing to a human being. It's embarrassing. I take up space. You can't come into my space. Can't sit on my chair. If you're a stranger in town, you threaten me. What are you doing in my town? At the beginning of history, there were two brothers, Cain and Hevel, and they could not share their existence. Is this my world or your, wor your world? Can't be both. It's so childish. I was here first, don't touch me, it's mine. <laughs> and then on top of that, in order to continue taking up space, give me food, give me drink, give me money, give me a house, give me... It's not, it's, it's embarrassing. That's why for 5,000 years people run around asking, why do we exist? It's embarrassing and it's depressing. There must be a good excuse. But they get confused when they don't know the difference between existing and living. So they ask, what is the purpose of life? You're so confused. What is the purpose of existence? Life is the answer, not the question. Life justifies your existence. If you do something, you make a contribution, you, you produce goodness, then your existence is justified. Otherwise, it's embarrassing and depressing. Now, if you get very serious about your existence, it gets heavier. If you're fighting for your existence, if you're worried about your existence, it gets heavier and heavier until you're depressed. 
depressed means your own existence is too heavy for you. What is the solution? Stop existing so much. Some psychiatrists tell people who are depressed, go help someone else. Stop thinking about yourself. And that helps. Because now you're having a life and the seesaw. When you think about life, you don't, you don't need so much energy for existence. When you think about existence, you don't have energy for life. So if you love somebody but you don't like them, the solution is give away your existence. Let them have it. Let your wife have your existence. Let her get depressed. <laughs> Why should you be depressed? And by giving her a little more existence, you have life. Now you're contributing, you're making a difference. This is why we still exist. The Romans wanted to guarantee their existence forever. That's all they wanted. So they built big cities and they gathered a lot of material to exist and they don't exist. Our history was different. Right at the beginning, Moshe took us out of Egypt, took us to the border of Eretz Yisrael, and told us, you're not going to have a good existence. Forget about it. You're going to live in Israel for a couple of weeks, a couple of years, you'll get thrown out, You'll get scattered all over the world. You're going to be unwelcome guests in other people's space. You won't have a good existence. So we said, so, uh, so, what's, the, so what's the plan? He said, you be busy living. Forget about existing. And that's been our history. We hardly exist, but we are so alive. In the worst days, when our existence was literally down to a thread, we produced the biggest scholars, the biggest tzaddikim, the best social institutions, the best community lives, the best families, when we barely existed. We had no food, we had no shoes, we had no real estate. Even today, we barely exist. Ask anybody in the United Nations. Is there a Jewish state in the Middle East? They never heard of it. It's not on their map, it doesn't exist. What do they talk about every day in the United Nations? Israel. So how is it? You don't exist, but you create all the problems in the world. That's our secret. We live. Existence takes care of itself. Like a doctor in the time of a plague. Everybody's getting sick. The doctor doesn't get sick. What is this? Not only doesn't he get sick, he doesn't get tired. He doesn't have to sleep, he doesn't have to eat, he doesn't have to sit down. It's because he is so alive. His purpose, what he's needed for, his importance is so real that the existence doesn't matter. As soon as the plague is over, <laughs> the doctor is in big trouble. He'll crash. When we are alive, our existence is easy. This is why God created the world. God exists perfect. He is infinite. He is all powerful. He is all capable. He was everywhere. And he was everything. And then he created the world. Why? Because if you have a good existence, 
you need a life to make it to make it right existence without life is painful a young woman said to me when I was very young I'm gonna kill myself nothing means anything I'm gonna kill myself and I was I was not professional I said nothing means anything nothing nothing is important nothing is so I said well if, if nothing is important why do you have to kill yourself sit you'll die sooner or later what's the rush if, if nothing means anything so just sit you gotta climb up a bridge and jump off why what's so important you just said nothing's important if a human being thinks that he has no life then he cannot accept his own existence existence demands life to be or not to be is a very good question because unless you have life you can't stand existing without a purpose where do we get this from we are created in God's image God has perfect existence but he wanted a life so he created us to have a relationship somebody to argue with somebody to fight with somebody to love somebody to hate to share existence rich people get depressed more often than poor people why because when your existence is good then the question of what is the purpose becomes very strong and I think this is what a midlife crisis is. A midlife crisis means you are working to make your existence better. When you reach midlife, you figure, okay, this is my existence. If I made my first million, if I didn't, pretty much this is my existence. And now you ask yourself, so what is it all for? and you go into a crisis. If your existence is comfortable, you have to ask the next question. So what is it all for? And if you don't ask it, your children will ask it. So what? Children who have comfortable existence and don't understand why become a very serious problem. This is why teenagers are so angry. If you ask any of the teenagers, what's your problem? What are you angry about? They all say the same thing all over the world. My mother ruined my whole life. Which is, of course, not true. Your mother doesn't ruin your life. Life means an opportunity to accomplish something. You can't ruin that. Your mother destroys your existence. That's true. Because when you think you exist, you have your own place, you're an important person, you have a lot of influence and a lot of... And then your mother walks in. Without saying anything, she destroys your existence. Mr. Big Shot, <laughs> you exist. How do you think you got to exist? I carried you for nine months. Ma, you're right, you're right, you're right. Can't argue. Mothers don't ruin your life. Especially teenagers, because teenagers don't have a life. Teenagers have an existence that isn't even theirs. A teenager says, it's my body, no, it's not. It's my room. No, it's not. It's my bed. 
No, it's not. <laughs> so you barely have an existence. You owe your existence to your mother. And you need to get a life. So when they get confused and mix up existing with living, you have a frustrated teenager. What is Shabbat? God says, six days a week, make your existence more comfortable. If something is broken, fix it. If something is cold, warm it up. If something's too hot, cool it down. Turn on this machine, that machine, sew, build, make your existence comfortable. But one day out of the week, Stop existing. Leave your existence alone. It's fine. Whatever you have, it's fine. Think about life. Think about life. I stop a guy in the street and I say, would you like to put on tefillin? He says, I don't, I don't need that. I say, good, so come put them on. He says, I don't need it. I said, that's perfect. All needs are part of your existence. I'm giving you a mitzvah that is part of life. Of course you don't need it. You're not God. Keep Shabbat. Oh, I don't need it. Of course you don't need it. You didn't write the Ten Commandments. What is tzedakah? You take a dollar that is good for your existence. That's all it's good for. And you give it to somebody else to make their existence a little better. You get life. If you give away a little of your existence, you have more life. You honor your mother by carrying her bag, by bringing the food to the table, by helping her with her coat. What does it say in the Ten Commandments? Kabed et avicha vet imecha. Honor your father and mother by making their existence easier. And what will you get? Ya'arichun yamecha. You will have a life. What is death? Life does not die. It can't die. What happens is your existence. When a person passes away, their existence ends. They don't take up space. They don't need to eat. They don't need to drink. But life? Life can't die. Just like death can't live. So the life goes on. They remember. They care. They still get happy if their children are doing well. They get upset if the children are not doing it. Their life goes on, but not here. Because here, you have to take up space. In the world of the souls of the, of the Alma, there's no space. There's just life. So this is why we say L'chaim. When we say L'chaim, we don't mean, I don't want to die. When we say l'chayim, we mean life, not existence. Because people get confused. But why do we say l'chayim when we take a drink? What happens when you take a drink? What happens when you're drunk? You stop taking up space. You ever notice that? When you drink, your existence relaxes. Like, how do you know that somebody is drunk if they're still standing up? You know because when they want to talk to you and they're sober, they stand around here. Depends on which country. <laughs> In America, it's over here. But when they're drunk and they want to talk to you, they stand here. So you back away and they follow you because they, they, don't, they don't feel space. 
They don't take up space. Their existence relaxes. Like a, cu a couch. A couch comfortable for four, well, four sober people. But the same couch is comfortable for nine drunk people. Comfortable. Drunk people don't take up space. That's why you should never drink when you're not happy. If you're excited about life and you want your existence to leave you alone, then you can take a drink. Like some Torah, Purim, a wedding. But when you're not happy, you're not excited about life, all you have is an existence. Don't relax it, you'll be left with nothing. Then you get depressed and this whole speech starts all over again. So how, what is, the, what is the secret of our happiness? We knew that our existence was not important. We are busy living. That's our secret. If you're busy living, you don't get depressed. If you tell your teenagers the difference between living and existing, you won't have a problem with your teenagers. If you humble your existence, but not your life, then you are psychologically indestructible. That's what we mean when we say l'chayim. To life, not to existence. So why does God give us existence? The more existence you have, the more you can turn it into life. Why are we successful? To help others. Why do we have more money than we need to spend? It's meant for somebody else. To make a life. So, we are very good at the things we need. But we have to become better at the things we don't need. Like when I ask the guy to put on film, if you don't need it, but someone needs it, that's life. So what is the difference between living and existing? Existing is what I need. Living is what I am needed for. It is much worse to not be needed than to have need. The worst thing your wife can say to you, I really should tell them, the worst thing a wife can say to a husband is, it's okay, I did it myself. It's the worst thing. Oh, you don't need me? That's painful. When a child says to parents, I don't care, I don't need you, that is so painful. Much better to have a need than to not be so when we say l'chaim, we mean, I choose life. Choose life, not over death. Choose life over existence. So now you'll understand. There's a famous little song, everybody knows it. A famous little expression, but now it will make so much more sense. If you want to describe the Jewish people, Am Yisrael, you want to say what is special, unique, and wise about the Jewish people. What is the answer? Am Yisrael Chai. We choose life over existence. L'chaim. L'chaim. Muchas gracias a Rolino Maris Friedman. Pido por favor a todos.